Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? It is Thursday night. You guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page with Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. I am a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador, and I paint here with you guys live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. So here we are. Um, if you guys don't already, I hope you'll go over and follow me on my Facebook page. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, so go find me over there if you haven't already. So um, you guys, tonight what we're going to be doing is we're working on this dresser behind me. And it's a really, really, really gorgeous piece of furniture. Um, so I um, started out by prepping this piece. And what I did to prep it is all I did was clean it really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning. And then it's got two coats of Dixie Belle Gloss on it. And that is because, let's take a look at what this piece is made of on the drawer sides. The original finish on this is this really dark wood color. You can see this here. This is what the whole piece was, was made of. It's a bleeder. It was a bleeder. And so two coats of boss. What I looked for is when the boss stopped discoloring, then I knew I had a nice um, seal in between the wood and the paint that I'm going to lay on top of it. And that's exactly what boss does. Boss creates a seal in between your piece. It encapsulates your piece so that it's not coming in contact with the paint you're about to put on top of it. Um, so I've got two beautiful coats of boss on this piece of furniture, and now tonight we're going to put a finish on it. I'd really appreciate it if you slow down on the words because I'm trying to count syllables back here. Encapsulate. <laughs> Encapsulate. <laughs> from, the Latin, from the Latin word, encapsulate. Um, so you guys, my husband Sean is here in the background. If he bothers you, let me know. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, let him know. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to tell you guys what colors I'm working in tonight. So this is kind of my color range up here. And um, I'm starting in the kind of bluish gray family is where I'm going. And so I've got Dixie Belle Midnight Sky, which is a deep, it's a soft black, but it can lean a little bit blue in certain lights. I feel like it gives me the black, the blackness that I want, but with those blue undertones that are going to be in the color range I'm going for. Manatee Gray. Manatee Gray. Gray can either be a warm gray or a cool gray. This is a cool gray. It leans a little bit blue. It's got blue undertones. Um, some of the grays like Gravel Road. If you thin Gravel Road out, you'll notice it turns really brown. It's a warm gray. So this is in the family I'm working in. This is French Linen, and this is a, this is a warm color, and I think um, this is an interesting choice because I'm using it for contrast. So it's not necessarily in the same color family that I'm working in, which is the cool blue gray. This is a little bit warm, but I want it for contrast. Can, can yeah. I just stop uh, you there? Uh, 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 uh. So Sheila, apparently uh, it's that time of year again. Somebody has a birthday. Oh, what? Yeah. What? Huh? Someone hmm? who? What? That's what? weird. Oh, Speaking of. Oh, Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> yes, the baby Jesus was born. And apparently Brittany thinks that you get extra points if you say that I'm annoying or bothering somebody. <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that tonight's <laughs> drinking game? This is not the debate, Brittany. Very confusing. This is not the debate. Um, so true. I have a little bit of housekeeping information. I was stay, saving it until we were a few minutes in. But you guys, I got a really sweet message. Um, hang out with me. We are going to paint. I'll go through the rest of my colors. Just hang out. Yeah, hang out. Um, I got a really sweet message from one of my followers and it came at a really um, important time for me because it, last month was a really hard month, really hard month, week, <laughs> year. I'm annoying a lot September. of people. September. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, it is what it is. Trust me. Um, and I got a really sweet message and it came at the perfect time. And so I shared the message on my page and I shared it with the message just that sometimes kind words can make somebody's day and you don't even know it and the message came from someone named Trish so Trish if you're watching so Trish um, Lewis is from Hubert North Carolina and it is her birthday today you guys today is her birthday what so I hope that everybody will pop on and that you guys will help me celebrate Trish today um, number one for her sweet message that she sent me at impeccable timing and then number two because her husband is also super sweet he messaged me and asked me to help celebrate with trish tonight so um you guys come on and wish, wish trish from north carolina a happy birthday tonight i hope you're not watching this trish i hope you're out to dinner with your husband as you should be 
But um, but a happy birthday. And thank you guys both so much for your messages. I was really touched by you guys as such a sweet couple. So thank you. Um, me, uh, me, 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 yeah. me. I'm getting ready to sing. Okay, so um, I'm also having an eye problem tonight. My, math, my makeup is making my eyes water. No, I still look the same. Um, so after French linen, my next color is paint blue, which is this really soft. It almost looks white in some lights, but that when it doesn't look blue, it, it ain't blue. Yeah. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> hate blue. And then my white is cotton, which is Dixie Belle's whitest white. So, uh, boss is a pretty true white and up against my, my cotton, which I think is kind of interesting. If you put these next to a true white, this is cotton. This is fluff. Fluff had a little too much color for me. Okay. So what I'm envisioning for this finish, am I better over here? Yes. Okay, sorry. You're better if you move about three just, feet that way. I just keep rolling down Kind of off way. camera a little. Um, um, <laughs> my eyes are super watery today. So you what, won't see where you're going. What I want to do is I'm going to use a dry brush. We'll talk about my brushes in a minute. And I'm going to create a really dark frame around here, but it's going to be kind of a moody look. It's not going to be a smooth, soft blend. It's going to be really kind of swirly and stormy and... Um, have a lot of texture in it. So the brushes that I have out are a lot of natural bristle brushes. And that's because I use natural bristle brushes when I want to add You got some texture. junk twisters going on. Natural bristle brushes, bristle, Yo, bristle? Wish for bristle. Trish and now we got it. <laughs> um, so I'm using natural bristle brushes. Huh? <laughs> See, now that I done did it. This, the brown one. The brown <laughs> okay, that's what we're using tonight. I've got out my bell brush. I like this one for adding texture. Um, and then I've got out my French tip brush. I've got out a few of these, so I've got a variety for each color. Um, I, of course, have out my mini and my oval medium, just in case I want to call them, call them up to base. Um, but I think we're going to mostly be using natural, bri natural bristle brushes yep. tonight. There we go with that chip monkey. <laughs> so I have, I had, oh, there it is. Okay, I have a Mr. Bottle out, but I don't think we're going to use it a lot tonight. I'm going to start out with my French tip brush, and I'm going to start out with my Midnight Sky, and I'm going to work it into these crevices just along the edges. This is going to take me two coats for coverage, you guys. So this is just my base coat, but you guys remember I tell you guys a lot, this is where I add. I conceptualize my finish. So I'm gonna dig this into my crevices all along the edges. And Can it's not dig it? it's not gonna get very good coverage because with natural bristle brushes, um, I, I feel like they take off a lot of the paint as you put it on. So I don't like these for smooth blends, but I like them for adding texture. See how I can get these nice like feathery ends just from the texture of the bristles. So I'm going to add my paint here, and then I'm going to use the moisture from other paint to work this out a little bit. Once I've got a nice little frame, I'm going to kind of go in order. So this is my Manatee Gray. That helps me open Dixie Bell containers. <laughs> it's like as we get older, when we, yeah, well, mainly get, me, when I go to stand up, you kind of need the... And I'm going to try to read some of my brushes. Always. The verbal communique. Up, oh, up. come on. Oh, man. Would you like me to get that? No, Okay, good. All right. So really, um, you guys, I have a variety of brushes out, and I'm going to use, I'll have roughly one for each color. Uh, I'm going to swirl in my next color, which is, this is Manatee Gray. So that particular birthday party... The, is, one that uh, we, the one that we weren't invited to? That yes, one? that oh, okay. one. Okay, just checking. Is uh, shouting out on the uh, is she IG? Watching? Oh, hi! Oh, you guys are over on Instagram. Go over to Facebook. I think you guys are, I think there's a party going on for you without you over on, on Facebook. Hello. Okay, and I'm going to come back to my brush with my um, Midnight Sky on it, and I'm going to work a little bit of Midnight Sky into that Manatee Gray. Keep in mind, you guys, this is a first coat over white. It's going to take me two coats exactly the same way to get full coverage on this piece. So for someone that's new to the painting world and they go to open up a new container of yes. Dixie Bell paint, do they need to stir that paint? Um, you should. I usually will shake them. So let's see, this one's already been opened. But, it's like um, a bad martini. I haven't used this color in a while, and it's pretty new, actually. I will shake my paint. I don't know if I want to shake this. I think I've added paint to this. 
I will shake it and then when you open it, there will be a little um, seal on the top and you just peel that seal off. Yeah, I've added paint to this. Uh -huh. Peel that seal. Yeah. I'm telling you. Okay, this is my hate blue. And I'm gonna work that in and then I'm gonna pull out my brush again for my last color, which was um, Manatee Gray. Now I got out five colors. I may end up not using them. Like I'm questioning the French linen. I'm questioning whether I want to add the French linen in. And that's sometimes I end up with an, a color or I'll make a color change along the way. And that's entirely what this first step is about, is working out my color choices. So I'm using a swirling motion and I add in my next color and then come back with the one before it and just work those two together. I'm working from the outside in. That's, I think that's optional. I don't think there's any right or wrong way if you chose to work from the inside out. And then I'm gonna do some cotton in the middle. I wanna keep my centers nice and light. Um, once I finish my paint finish with these two coats, I'm also gonna emphasize these dark edges with some um, black wax. So a technical question for you. On yes. the French tip brush, do you think it sheds a little much? Um, when you first get the French tip brush, what you always want to do anytime you get a new brush is you want to wash it before you go use it. Uh, I don't like this brush. That's not Throw it across the garage. Yeah, that one sucks. That's no big deal. <laughs> I'm going to go to my Bell brush because I don't have any more French tip brushes out. Um, you always want to wash your brushes before you go to use them. So especially with, with natural bristles, I'm gonna get paint all over my hands. But, um, oh here, this is a redesign with Prima brush. So you wanna take it, and when you first get the brush, wash it before you use it. And give it a good pulling, and um, and that's just part of the manufacturing process. These are boar hair bristles. This is, a, oh, boar's hair is what natural Trish bristles Oh, is eating are. Mexican food. I'm watching the master at work. Stop. But I'm on this side of the camera. Stop the, <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm sure that's what you meant. <laughs> But your, so, but your camera work is so masterful. I have, a, I have a face for this side of the camera. So uh, you're not using water. Why I'm are you not, not using, using water? water because I want the texture in this. I don't want to. I'm using just the moisture of the paint to work these colors together. You can add a little bit of moisture, but what it does, it kind of smooths out those brush strokes. And I don't want to smooth them out. I want them to be a little rough, a little bit rough, a little rough and tumbled. So this is my paint blue. I just added my fluff to the center. I don't want it to get too dark, you guys. I really want to keep just my very edges dark, so I feel like I need to work the light out a little bit more. So Trish, us and 600 of your closest friends yeah, are wishing all? you a happy birthday. <laughs> now you mentioned cake. I really hope you can cut that 600 ways. Yeah, it better be a Costco one. Shipping's going to be oh, a little wait, expensive. Can you, can oh, you get a Costco cake? Let's reach out to our official uh, contact. Yeah, we have an official... Costco expert on Fireball June, are you here tonight? Jizz. Can you order cakes at Costco yet? They stopped for COVID. You couldn't get a cake there. Ugh. You know, and they are for birthdays, but they're also for like Tuesdays. Yeah. They're just for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Clearly, Sean and I do eat cake for dinner. Okay. Obviously, when they say that you're so hungry you could eat a horse, I just look like I ate a horse. I'm so hungry I could eat a sheep cake. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just lightening up my colors. I pulled that paint blue out a little bit. And I'm kind of going back in reverse order now. get it into these crevices along the edge of the drawer. And then I'm gonna come back with the color just before it, which is my paint blue, and just brush that right over top. And I'm just using the moisture of the paint. It does get really dry. So. We got a lot of birthdays if, in October. If I were to use water on this, I would just mist it, just enough to keep the paint moving. But I don't want it to be smooth, soft, blended. This is more of a texture. I want the contrast between the colors. I like how down here looks. I'm gonna go up here and try to work this a little bit better. 
this coat is my first coat. It, I don't have to get this coat perfect. <laughs> I want to get my colors basically in place, get my idea worked out. I was just using the wrong brush. See, that's the hazard of having so many brushes out. All these people, sorry, this is totally behind the scenes camera guy action. All these people with October birthdays makes me want to count back nine months and see what was going on. <laughs> yeah, what year was that? <laughs> Although, we should not talk because yeah. we also have an October baby. Uh, my middle son, Ashton, his birthday is October 25th. So he's our Halloween baby. He um, was a NICU baby. <clears throat> this is my midnight sky. I'm just darkening up the crevices. He was a NICU baby, so he came home from the hospital on October 25th. He came no, no, home. no. He was born he was October, October 25th. 25th. Sorry. And he came home on Halloween, so we dressed him up like a pumpkin to bring him home from the hospital. He's our Halloween baby. Okay, so I like this. I feel like I like where I am. Um, I probably want to work this white out. It's a little stark. I'm just going to brush a little bit of the blue right over top of it. I don't want it to have like this definitive line where the colors are. So I like that. That's pretty. Okay, in between my drawers, even though I've got my darker color right on the edge of it, I don't want in between my drawers to be dark. Just using a really dry brush and I'm just hitting the edge of this just so in the tip of my French tip bristles are going into this crevice right here and just shadowing them a little bit because I want those crevices to stay dark I just don't want it to carry too much into my drawer so in here I'm going to go I want these to stay back to my lighter color which is manatee so I'm going to come back And just so that kind of matches the look of my piece, I'm going to work a little bit of the paint Whoa. blue into it also. Oh, man. What? Jill says she was born in January and her brother was born the same year in November. Oh! <laughs> Do the counting on that wow. one. Wow. Man, that would be rough. That's a lot of lack of sleep. And we move on. Your parents. Okay. So let's come down here. I feel like I like this drawer right here and I'm gonna come down. I'm just gonna keep repeating the process. One, working one drawer at a time. And keep in mind, this is just my base coat. So when I come back to do my second coat, I can, and I think this will dry enough. We could probably come back and, and hit a couple of these drawers with a second coat tonight. Um, because it's such a thin layer of paint. I'm really working that paint out with the brush. So it's drying really fast. Like there is, I mean, there is no moisture in this whatsoever. So little paint on here. Oh, I just wiped a little bit of my next coat. We'll work that out in the next coat. I like when everybody else starts doing math on these things. <laughs> Irish twins, somebody didn't oh, wait yeah, the recommended okay. six weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do me a favor and run through your colors real quick again. Yes. So my darkest color, which I'm putting on right now, this is uh, Dixieville Midnight Sky. And then I've got Manatee Gray, Paint Blue, and um, Cotton in the middle. So I'm working with four colors right now. I had gotten out French Linen, but I don't think I'm going to call it into play. I like this mix that I'm working with right now. I do that a lot where I'll bring out an extra color and sometimes I use it. Sometimes I'll make a color choice on the spot. Sometimes I change the colors I think I'm going to use. This is Manatee Gray. And I'm working into that midnight sky that I just put on. So I put on this color and then I'm going to come back with the one before it, which was the midnight sky. And I'm just going to work them together a little bit, just in the crevices on this case, because I just want the midnight sky in those crevices. I'm just and when you put the boss on underneath, you did paint it by hand, right? Yes, you not spray. I did. You can spray boss, but I did not. Um, this is painted on by hand, all with a brush. And then as far as this tempo or speed that you are painting, is this typical for you? No, it's not. Painting on camera 
takes twice as long as if I was just doing this. So in other words, as fast as you're moving that brush, do you typically move it that fast? Oh, or faster? yeah. This is. I think this is a pretty um, comfortable finish. Like it's not. Um, there's not a lot of perfection in it. I can just be kind of messy with it. So yeah, this, no, I, I actually feel like I, I could probably do a coat on a dresser like this in about an hour. And then I come back and do a second coat and that takes about an hour too, roughly. Now, if I'm blending, that's a finish, like really smooth blends, that's a finish that's gonna take me much longer because I'm gonna spend more time perfecting the blends. You know, I add my next color, I've gotta come back with the color before it. This is my cotton. Um, for cotton, I'm using my, this is the Bell brush. And I just picked natural bristle brushes. I don't have enough. Um, I think I do. I might have more. I do have more French tip brushes somewhere. Um, so I grabbed a Bell brush. So these are what I'm using tonight. My French tip bristles and my Bell brush. So my Bell brush is shedding a little bit. It's not uncommon, you guys. That's, it's just part of the manufacturing process. And natural bristles shed way more than your synthetic bristles. Synthetic are going to be your Dixie Belle Mini, your Oval Medium. These are synthetic bristles. These are natural bristles. These are more coarse. Um, I like them for textured finishes, but I don't use a natural bristle brush for smooth finishes a lot. That's my personal preference. Um, I do want my drawers to kind of match when I'm done. There will be some variation in between all of them. So, so now I worked my way in. Now I'm like working my way back out and I'm just going to go back through my colors and work them back together. I, I have very little paint going on this. Very little paint. I feel like this one I got more paint blue. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I'm going to give myself a little bit of water. And I'm just going to pull that lighter color. And I can see, you guys, it starts layering. I can see a little bit of the manatee peeking through the paint. And a little bit of the midnight sky peeks through from underneath that. So the colors start layering a little bit, too. And that's really pretty. I want that. And then kind of what I did up here, I'm just using the tip of my uh, French tip brush. And I'm just writing this crevice right here to just darken that crevice, almost like just like a shadowing with a really almost dry brush. In this corner, I'm going to fix a little bit. And then I feel like I want it, my white a little more. I'm just adding water so I can take this paint that's already on the piece and put it, keep it in play. But I don't really want the moisture. Now the brushes you're using, are they all Dixie Bell brushes? Uh, yeah, so far I'm all at Dix Dixie Bell brushes. I have my three French tip and then a Bell brush. And then totally offbeat, do you know the maker of this particular dresser? Um, okay, so this dresser, you guys, um, it's actually, this is an Indonesian piece, and you'll see a lot uh, when they're Indonesian pieces look like fancy reproductions. This is a, it's a more modern piece. It's not that old. It, um, they usually don't have a lot of markings on them and they, you know, it is, it's from Indonesia. So these heavy carvings, they're beautiful pieces of furniture. Um, it's got all these heavy carvings, um, but it's a, it's a modern Indonesian reproduction. It's not, um, you know, some exotic antique. But, but it's beautiful. It's very well made. It's got solid wood drawer boxes. So um, I know everybody oohed and odd when I show pictures of this piece, like I can't paint it, but it's not, um, this is not a val valuable antique, you guys. And I think it's going to be beautiful when it's done. You know, I'll take and have this finish consistent across my drawers, and then I'm going to, I'll put a little, you know, gold gilding wax and my hardware. We'll have you know, a little bit of metallic. It's got a giant mirror that goes with it. So it's going to be very dramatic. Can I pan over real quick just to show the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, never mind my mess out here. Yeah. This is what we're working with. Yeah. Um, you can see that white 
mirror right next to the red ladder. It's got for stuff. it's got boss on it. If you want to see the, them together, you guys, uh, you can go to my page and I posted a picture of them together tonight. Anyhow. Um. So you guys, what happens in my workspace is I um. I get up against shipping deadlines, and I'm up against one right now, and uh, that means I have to pull every piece that's going to be shipped to get it ready to go, and that's where I am. I've got several pieces in here, and it squeezes my workspace down to the size of a, I don't know. Quarter. Quarter. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, I run out of space, and I have to have those pieces until the shipper arrives. So then who do you harass? Um... So right now, I'm asking for a friend. I've got like six pieces sitting over there, covered under blankets, waiting for the ship. And shippers are like, I, you know, my shipper doesn't watch me on camera, so I can say this. No shippers watch me on camera, I don't think. Shippers are like gypsies. <laughs> they just show up in the middle of the night. You don't always know when they're going to come. <laughs> I love them. We have a good, great relationship, but... Uh, so I just make sure I'm always prepared when I know that I've got one coming, and that means all the pieces come out. Getting ready to go on a road trip. Okay, so I've just put the manatee gray, and then I come back with the color before, which is my midnight sky. Um, if you find that you're struggling with this finish and you want a little bit of moisture, add a little bit of water. There's no reason you can't. It's my compressor. Why's your compressor going up? Are the kids out there? Yeah, kids are out there nail Throwing down some nail gun nail action. Yeah. Nail gun wars. Just wars. checking. <laughs> I kind of was using it earlier. <laughs> oh. oh, that's right. <laughs> and then, you know, there's these other things called a job. I just got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, today's been a busy day. Okay, this is my hate blue. I really like these drawers right here. I feel like I need to figure out this, the space in between here. Maybe it would look better in the darker finish. I don't know. I, I don't think I want it too dark, though. I still want it to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to play with that space a little bit. And I can choose to either go dark and just make it like my midnight sky. I don't know. I'll have to play with in between the drawers a little bit. Hmm. But I really like how the drawers themselves are turning out. And that was kind of my focus tonight. So that was my hate blue. Come back with the color before it, which is manatee. And work them in together. Very textured, very little paint, very moody, kind of stormy. You can take the drawers out if you want, if you want to um, sit them on their edge and work so you're looking <laughs> at the face of it. I was going to comment on... <laughs> Dana posted a comment about the particular wood that is used in Indonesia. Oh, I thought that was interesting. What so is it? Oh, I, I have to go back. I'm, I can't remember what I did two minutes ago. Um, but I was going to read up on it later. But then she came back and said, I'm not a tree hugger, just a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. My kids like to watch on YouTube. There's all these guys that... Uh, they're in Indonesia where they build like these mud huts. It's like a 10 minute, five minute video yeah. and they go cutting in the ground. It's just set to music in the background. So this is my hate blue and I'm just gonna go right into the cotton a little bit, just so they're kind of mixed in the middle. So I don't have this stark spot of cotton right in the middle. How am I looking for consistency? If Since you're sitting back from me, do they look pretty consistent? Mm. <laughs> <Yeah. Huh? laughs> sorry, sorry, go back to sleep. So my kids like to watch those videos on YouTube where they make like mud huts over the course of a day. Those guys are incredible. So I like, I really like this. I Careful think it's what a you're uh, scooting into. Sorry. Yeah. Excuse me. You should. So I, I'm not, I'm unsure. I feel like I don't want this to be dark all the way across here. I'm unsure how to incorporate this space right here. So I always get asked if I pull my drawers out and I finish around the edges. You guys, I do. I will do all these drawers while they're in the face of my piece so that I can see exactly what I just asked you. Do I have a consistent finish? Does this drawer look like this one, look like this one? And then once I have them all done, I will come and do around my edges. And I'm gonna do the edge in Midnight Sky. 
but I don't want it to be dark. I don't want the dark to start overtaking that this is actually meant to be a pretty light finish. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of Midnight Sky and then I'm gonna work the same colors in and I'll, I do, I'll do the same finish on my drawer edge that I would inside of my finish, or on the outside of my finished piece. I do on the inside as well. This is my Manatee. So I'm just kind of working backwards through my colors. I don't think I'll put any um, cotton on here. I'll just go to the paint blue and that'll be my kind of lightest color. And then I'm just going to go back through and work those colors into each other. So then when I put this in, it's going to match all the way around the edge of my drawers to the edge of my piece. Um, I will probably take my drawers out to actually paint the frame. I usually like a really dark leg, and this piece has really interesting feet on it. Can you see the feet on camera? They're, um, it's ball and claw, so I usually will paint these, and then I take a little bit of gold gilding wax and I make the ball gold, so it looks like it's sitting on a gold ball, and that way it doesn't get lost in my paint finish, because I love ball and claw feet, and these are really nicely carved. It's a beautiful piece of furniture. But I can come down and I can paint onto it because my gilding wax is gonna cover my paint no matter what. That's one of the last steps I do is come back with the gilding wax. So I like my feet to be dark. I think I'm gonna take the um, midnight sky and I'll, I'll lighten it as I go across here. Let's work on, on down here at the bottom a little bit. Can you see this okay? Uh, it does get a little dark over here. Uh, someone complained as far as they couldn't see the uh, haint blue. Oh, yeah. Haint is a really light color. It almost looks like a white. Let me push this over a little bit. Let's get into the better light. Okay, you can start to... Does that help at all? A little bit, yeah. You can kind of see the hue in there. Okay. Haint is a really soft, soft, pale blue. I think you'd call it like a baby blue, but don't feel that it has to be only used for baby pieces at all. So that was my midnight sky. So now really quick, just to kind of step back a second, when you open your drawers, you said that you typically will paint it with the same color that... Yeah, so I make sure that once I've got the face kind of decided, I know where my colors are gonna lie, I make the around the frame of my drawer match. So all the way around this, onto the drawer sides over here, I would come and paint this so that whatever finish I've got on the front carries around the frame of my drawer. Now, I don't usually paint this lip right here unless it's going to show. And the reason is when you add layers of paint all around this and it's a tight fitting drawer, you can cause it to start rubbing and scraping. So this is the bottom of the drawer. Nobody's going to see it. I'm not going to paint this lip down here. I don't want to keep adding thick layers all around every side of this because each one of those... What if I'm laying on the floor trying to open up one of the drawers? Well, I mean, get up. What are you doing <laughs> down there? Okay, so this, um, I need to put a piece of tape on here so that I don't start painting onto my wood drawer sides. Okay, so I'm going to tape off just this side and that's only because it shows a little bit when it's peeking out the edge of the dresser. I just can see underneath the, the lip of this. I'm just gonna hit this with my midnight sky because I know that I want these edges to stay nice and dark. Wow, signing on from Taiwan. Ooh. Good morning. And then same thing with inside the frame of my drawers, those I paint to match too. So if I've got midnight sky in this corner, this is gonna be midnight sky. So we'll go down this leg with the dark. And then I'm going to come up here. With that darker color. And then I'll just start kind of fading it out. So this will be nice and light, I think, right here by the time I get to here. And I can change the order of the colors at any time. If I put a color in one spot and I don't like it, then I can just come back. It's a little hard to reach over to there. And then um, now I'm going to come in with my manatee gray 
And I'm doing the same finish inside the, the dresser that I did on the front of the drawer so that it all matches. It all will look nice and consistent when I'm done. And then a little bit of my paint glue. So that's this soft color. I had, a, I had a container that was almost empty that I poured into this one, so it's ridiculously overfilled. Friday afternoon in the New Z. Uh, That's New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Yep. See what I did there? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending I don't. Uh, never gets old. Oh wait, it does. I actually really <clears throat> like painting over boss. Um, you know this this one I use boss because I do have fairly light colors going on here, and I don't want the bleeding. But I love painting over a coat of boss. It makes the paint go on really nicely. I'm gonna make sure that I dig my colors into these crevices. So when I'm doing my little swirly here, making sure I get into the crevice of this molding. And it's the same finish down here that I did across the drawer fronts. Coming back with the brush before it so I can work those two together. really pretty down there. And then I'm going to come back with my cotton just across this molding. Do you think you're going to add a transfer or anything to this piece? No, I'm not going to. This is actually custom order and we talked about the finishes that she wanted, kind of the colors that she wanted. And, uh, we exchanged photos and so it's just going to be a painted finish and then it'll have a wood stain top but we're going to do some glazes and some gilding waxes and so that's going to be where the interest comes <clears> in this piece. I just really quick, sorry, uh, Dana, it's just boss on the back end of it. The, yeah, the, the top coat right there that you see. Just the plain white is just Dixie Belle boss. That's just a primer coat. That is a stain and odor blocking primer, and that's because this was a really dark wood piece, rich wood with lots of oils in it. It was a bleeder. And that was my hate blue down there. Um, so I feel like with really ornate pieces, I don't tend to use transfers on them as much. And that's because the piece itself has a lot going on. So then I think that the transfer can almost start to compete with the detail on the piece. And if you guys can see, this is all carved <laughs> right here. I'm gonna bring all this out. This is all carvings. There's carvings down here. The feet are carved. There's a lot of interest on this piece. Um, and I don't want to compete with that. A, a, a transfer would be pretty. But even if I did a transfer, it would be something really, really simple. Really simple. Just, I don't know, a little bit of scroll work or something coming down would be pretty. Just, you know, a couple molds in the corner. Something, it would be simple. Oh, Dana, don't worry about it. We don't clock watch either. There was someone clock watching me? No, 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 no. As far as uh, coming on late. Not everybody showed up on time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. We're always late. Um... So I'm going to go through my colors again. So my colors I'm using are my darkest color is Midnight Sky, which is this deep, deep, rich color here. Run that down the side a little bit. Um, and then next I've got Manatee Gray. I'm using a swirling motion and working the colors into each other. It's not a smooth blend. This is not a smooth blended finish. Using natural bristles to get texture. I'm just going to keep these corners a little bit shaded so they just look a little dirty. Um, and then I've got Haint Blue. Um, my Haint Blue and my Manatee brush keep getting mixed up so they look like the same brush now. <laughs> it's so little paint and I'm just hitting the tips of my bristles anytime I'm picking up paint. I'm not really worried about that. Haint Blue and then Cotton is the white that I so four colors, Midnight Sky, Manatee Gray, Paint Bloom, Cotton. And how many coats of boss did you throw on there? This is two coats. <clears throat> two coats. Two coats are recommended. Sometimes if, two I'm, two? sometimes if I'm just doing it as a preventative, I feel like I can get away with one. But this was not a preventative. This was a necessity. It needed, it needed its boss. And then what do you think you're going to do up top? Uh, so the top, you can see right here. It's got this uh, lip on it right here that's really detailed. So I'm gonna keep this lip painted and the very, very flattest portion of the top, I'm gonna strip back to bare wood and it's gonna be stained, a dark wood stain. 
This is the original finish on here. It's not finished right now. Um, I'm going to come back and strip that top. I'm going to put glaze in all these details. So uh, I like when the dark points are really dark, or low points are really dark, and then my high points, I hit them with gilding wax. And then I've got three layers. I've got the lowest point, which is my glaze, then I've got my painted finish, and then the gilding wax on top. And all those layers give so much interest to carvings like this. This is my Midnight Sky Brush, and I'm not even adding paint to it. I'm just coming back with what's left in the brush. And I'm just darkening up these corners here, here, here. Just those little corners where, where the drawers meet up. And then this very, this uh, outermost ridge right here will just have a highlight of the cup. I'm just kind of dry brush that over the tops of my moldings. I don't have my emboss on the sides yet, you guys. That is just was a time issue. So as far as stripping down the top. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to sand it. I'm not going to put a chemical stripper on this, especially not after I have a painted finish yes, on this. Yes, that's where I was going. Again, you guys, I just prepped this yesterday. It, it's just a time issue. It's a time issue. I usually prefer to do my wood stain tops first, but sometimes I need to work at a time crunch and I don't have that option. So I'm just going to sand it. Um, this will sand pretty easily. So I like this. I like what I got going on here. I'll lighten this move up a little bit. So that's it. So my next coat on this is going to be an exact duplicate, you guys, of the finish I just did. I'm going to come back and I'll do the same thing, working my way in and then working my way out again. Starting with my darkest color. I told you we try to do a second coat. Let's try to do a coat on this one here. And go. I just added a tiny bit of Midnight Sky just to the tips of my bristles. I use Midnight Sky a lot for shading, you guys. I really like it because it's softer than a harsh black. And I'm just going to work it into this crevice right here. And it's going to start out being darker than I want because then I'm going to work that next color in and as I layer the colors over each other it starts lightening them a little bit. Now kind of a side question when you're uh, going to sand the top what do you usually start off with? I start I usually wise. start off with an 80, a 120, and a 220. 80, 120, 220. Now I have a surf prep sander and they actually name their grits. They don't have numbers so that's like a medium to a fine to a very fine. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm going to come back with my, see it's an exact repeat of what we did in the first step. This is my manatee gray. Give myself a little bit more paint. I'm barely getting any paint when I dip this in. Sometimes you do get loose bristles. There's a loose bristle. Just pull them out. If you get them in your paint finish, you can just dig them out with the tips of your bristles. Very common, especially with natural bristles. You don't get it as much with the syn synthetic brushes. Oh, Brittany, speaking my language. A whole sheet pan of dino nuggets oh, are cooking. Yeah. Another <laughs> glass of wine is poured. She can pay attention again. Yep. Yeah, I hear you. Mine are inside. We usually do dinner after our Thursday night. Live. Battle Royale. Battling it out. Ringside. For the dino nuggets. Okay, then I'm going to come back with my heat blue. Really, but is it? Well, I really messed myself up by um, mixing it up on the brush. The brushes. <sighs> can't take you anywhere. Literally, you can't right now. It's not allowed. Well, we're kind of opening back up. So I love this second coat because I start getting these layers because now I've got a first layer on here and so everything I'm putting on is going over something else. They start peeking through more than just the white. And I've got these cool, it looks kind of smoky. Oh, it's so pretty. This is, it, it kind of starts to come alive as you let your paint dry and come back and do another layer. My 
brushes are a little bit dry, so they're just picking up a little bit of the texture of the paint. And then in the center, this is my cotton. So uh, one thing you guys can notice is um, this is a test of my paint too because I'm working this pretty aggressively, pretty aggressively. I'm not pulling any of the paint even though I just put this on in the last half an hour on camera with you guys. You saw me put the paint on. It's not pulling. And I'm working it. I've got a lot of pressure on my brush. It's a lot of movement. I did not sand this piece down before I put boss on it. I love this side. I wish I was sitting over here a little bit better because I'm not as happy as how this side is turning out. Get myself a little bit of water over there. What are you going to top coat in? Um, that's a great question. This will probably be sprayed in gator hide, I'm thinking. Probably sprayed in gator hide. Just for a kind of light sheen on it. Um, that's usually the last thing I do. By the last thing, I mean I literally don't even do it. <laughs> it's the last thing in the world that I'm going to do. Sean usually sprays my clear coats for me. So I get to do all the fun fancy stuff. All right, so basically my same finish. It darkened up my uh, my colors, and it starts. You start getting those layers in it. And I'm just gonna lighten up this midnight sky a little bit, remembering that I'm going to darken this with black wax in the corner. So I don't need the paint to do that as much for me. I just want it to give a little bit of shadowing from the paint. So Wendy, to answer your question, I'm gonna pan down here. Instead of cleaning the brush every time, there's a brush for each occasion. There's a brush for each occasion. <laughs> brush for every occasion. Okay, so I've got more out here. I'm, I'm at four brushes. All, let me put these away because I didn't use these. So none of these are used. These are the four brushes that I use. So four colors, four brushes. You can see they're darkest to light. This one is my Isabel brush, and that's just because that's what I grab first but you know since we're playing Crayola uh, what colors you're using again midnight sky manatee gray paint blue cotton those are my colors and then I'm just this is my um this is my brush for my cotton but I'm just kind of dry brushing over the texture of the paint that's it just to hit those tops of the paint that little bit of white it just kind of softens the colors a little bit and it adds a, a layer another layered look so that's just a totally dry brush dry brush meaning I didn't add any water it's whatever little bit of paint is left on these bristles because they're almost dry you guys um, there's very little moisture in this except for the moisture of the paint in this technique apparently a few people out there the ladies need a Sean yeah. So for the low, low price of. Yeah, you should really find one. Not mine, though. Hands off, ladies. Not mine. I worked hard for that Just one. Get your pieces out there for some spraying. It's finally paying off. drive on by. Finally paying off. Wait, what? <laughs> 20 years in. 25 years in. Finally paying off. I think it's time to just stop counting. Yeah. All right, you guys. So I'm going to pack it up. I did have a request to show you guys my next painted piece that I'm going to be posting pretty soon. So you guys want a sneak peek of a finished piece that I haven't posted yet? No, nobody said anything. No one? No. No, not Sheila or anyone? Nobody. Not Jason? No. Oh, okay. Jason was the first one on. <laughs> Might have been the first one off. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I usually, I usually check out about midway through too, guys. I don't blame you. I do too. I lost my lid for my heat glue. I'll blame that later. All right. All right, you guys want to turn around and see my next finished piece? It's not all the way put together, but it's close enough. I feel like you're in my way. No. Okay, metallic.
metallics. It's all metallics. It's not quite done yet, you guys. I still have a treatment to go across these drawers. Um, oh, there we go. Brother Jason. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, but what I think is really cool about this, you'll really see it in pictures, is this is a stencil with glass bead gel. There's gonna be, it's gonna mimic that up here on the drawers too. And then I've got some molds going on here, um, keyhole molds, it, so I've still got a little bit of work to do on this one, but this is really where, where it all, you can see the metallic. Can they have me that screwdriver stuff? One in the cup. And then, some paper drawers in here for a little surprise. So this is what's coming up next. It's sparkle, metallics, not quite done yet. Obviously I don't even have the hardware on. It's got a clear coat on it today. So I will keep working on that. But I'm gonna pop off you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I will be back next Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern to paint with you guys. If you guys wanna um, check out any of the colors that we used tonight, um, I put my link above in the post, and I always appreciate purchases made through there. Those support my small business. You can also use that link to find a retailer near you if you want to go in and check out the paint um, and find someone who carries it in your area. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. Thank you.